It's the Martin and Lewis Show. The National Broadcasting Company brings you transcribed from Chicago, The Martin and Lewis Show, featuring Sheldon Leonard, Flo McMichael, Dick Stabile and his orchestra, and starring Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Dean and Jerry are in Chicago. Right now, we find them on their first day off from personal appearances at the Shea Free, getting some relaxation by strolling down Chicago's Michigan Boulevard. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Hey, Jerry, you've been very quiet since we got to Chicago. Something wrong? No, Dean, it's just that I'm still embarrassed about what happened when we arrived at the airport. I don't remember anything unusual except that the American Airlines stewardess refused to carry my bags. What happened to you? Well, as the plane landed, the stewardess said, unfasten safety belts. I unfastened the wrong belt and got off the plane without my fan. You know, Jer, come to think of it, I did notice something strange, but then I decided you were wearing chartreuse knickers. Hmm? Well, I was told to dress warmly for Chicago. Besides, I... Dean, look out! Gee, that scared driver ought to have his eyes examined. He missed us. Well, he didn't miss us by much. You know, for a moment, I thought I was back in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. That's a place where old Chicago cab drivers go to die. <laughs> well, from now on, Jerry, we don't cross Michigan Boulevard. You're right. We'll walk around and swim in from Canada. <laughs> you know, Jerry... It's good to have a day off from the club so we can walk around and see Chicago. You know, it's a very historical town, Jerry. Remember the story about Mrs. O'Leary's cow? No. Oh, sure you do. The cow that started the fire. And you know what happened. The cow burned the candles at both ends? <laughs> no, Jerry, it started the great Chicago fire. Really? Well, people shouldn't let a cow smoke in bed. <laughs> Jerry, I'm amazed at you. You're 23 years old now. Do you know what's going to become of you? Yeah, I'm going to become 24. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Dean? You see, you said, what is going to become of you? So instead of saying I might become a doctor or a lawyer, I just said I'm going to become 24. Because I'm 23 years old now, see? And then if a year passes by, that makes me 24. That's what I'm going to become. So it's all in the line of a joke. That's why I said it, see? And I thought you'd laugh and you didn't. See, but it was a gag and I wish I was dead. <laughs> ah, come on. Let's go back to the hotel, Jerry. We ought to think of something to do on our day off. Dean, look at those girls coming around the corner of that building. Ooh, now I know why they call this the Windy City. <laughs> All right, Jerry, come on, let's go. Stop staring. I'm not staring, Dean. I wouldn't think of staring. Dean, do all girls carry $10 bills in their body? <laughs> Why, hello, fellas. I've been looking for you. Well, Sophie, how did you get to Chicago? Why, how? By train, of course. I rode on the rods beneath the observation car. Beneath the observation car. Well, yeah. Sophie, you don't have to travel like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. You do, huh? My doctor said I should always be under observation. <laughs> You've told your joke. You may now return to Los Angeles. <laughs> hey, look, listen, I got something that is very important to discuss with you fellas. This is an idea that will mean just a little bit of work for you, but a lot of money for me. <laughs> So, but you're always trying to make money off us. Now, don't be silly, boys. I am your friend. I am as honest as the day is long. Do you notice how short the days are this time of year? <laughs> what proposition have you got for us this time, Soapy? I'll tell you, I want to be your agent. I will get you a job, and you guys will get 75%, and I will get 50%. Oh, come on. Wait a minute now. <laughs> that adds up to 125%. How can it be? Don't let anybody tell you there's no inflation. <laughs> He's right. He's right about inflation, Dean. Now, just the other day, I noticed that pickled pig's feet went from 22 cents a pound to 34 cents a pound. <laughs> not including a slight charge for pickled pig feet wearing spats. <laughs> now, 
If the market continues to rise, it will affect every man, woman, and pig in America. <laughs> and the day will come, mark my word, when it will be impossible, impossible to talk a pig into getting pickled. <laughs> You know, Jack, there's something in what you say, but I haven't got time to find it. <laughs> well, tell me, boys, am I your age? I sold you to a resort hotel in Turkey Run. <laughs> okay, Sophie, where do we go? You go out to Turkey Run, there's a hotel out there, and it's called Mother Hockelmeyer's Indian Retreat. <laughs> do we see Mother Hockelmeyer? <laughs> Do we see Mother Hucklemeyer? Well, no, you don't. Mother Hucklemeyer is really Joe Schlum. <laughs> now, there's one little thing that I better tell you. You see, they, uh, they don't know that you are entertainers. I got you a maintenance job, which is supposed to you go around killing bugs. Killing bugs? Uh-huh. What kind of a job is that? I'm afraid of bugs. Even a little mosquito frightens me. Why does a mosquito frighten you? Well, you see, I haven't been too well. <laughs> Well, fellas, look, will you please, will you do it for my sake? Jerry, what do you say we do it for kicks? Now, uh, how do we get to this place? We'll drive. I borrowed the hotel manager's car. He loaned you his car? Yeah, it's a Hudson. The only car you step up to get out of. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's kill Bug. <laughs> Oh, Sam, uh, did the maintenance men Soapy Leonard recommended arrive? No, Mr. Schlump, but here comes a couple of fellows up the walk. No, 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 no. They, they look more like some of those college boys looking for jobs as children's counselors. Now, make sure they've had some experience with child care. I'll be in my office. All right, Mr. Schlump. <laughs> oh, hello. We came up about the job. Oh, yes. Well, you know, it's hard work. Now, just what is your method of handling the little ones when they become unruly? Oh, we just sprayed them good with poison. <laughs> what did you say? I said spray them with poison. Unless there's just a few of them, then you can just stamp on them with your feet. <laughs> Man, you're either crazy or there's a misunderstanding here. Now, wait a minute, mister. There must be something wrong. Aren't we supposed to be hired for spraying bugs? Bugs? Oh, for goodness sake, I was talking about children. Well, if you insist, we'll spray them, too. <laughs> One moment, please. Oh, Mr. Schlump. Yes, what is it? Uh, we're Martin and Lois. Sophie Leonard sent us over. Oh, yes, yes, I see now. Well, we'd better put you right to work on the bugs. If it's all the same to you, we'd rather entertain than kill bugs. Entertain? Yeah, we work in nightclubs. Dean sings. Mm, do you sing well? Mm, quite well. Like a bird? Even better, like Crosby. <laughs> Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. All the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells and bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing the sleighing song tonight. Here in Chicago, the snow is snow and snow. The wind that blow, blow up the streets of Chicago. Back in Hollywood, the sun is shining good. You take the sun, we'll take the snow. There's dough in Chicago. Jingle bells, jingle bells, oh, jingle all the way. Well, oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Well, jingle bells, oh, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Well, 
That was pretty good, Martin. I want you to sing that song three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as I think that you... Mr. Schlump, I demand that you cancel my reservation at your hotel. Now, let's not be hasty, Mrs. Van Loop. When I came here and brought my wealthy friends, you told me my daughter Daisy Esther would meet some important, eligible bachelors. Well, didn't I introduce her to Count von Broheim? Yes. But who ever heard of the Empire of Cicero? <laughs> I'm taking her away from this place immediately. Now, that's a shame, Mrs. Van Loop. Especially when two new guests have arrived from Hollywood. This is Martin and Lewis, famous movie producers. Play along with me, boys. There's a hundred bucks a piece in this for you. Martin and Lewis. Martin and Lewis. Now, where have I seen your faces before? Probably in front of our heads. <laughs> You know, actually, Mrs. Van Loop, uh, we're a little bit of everything. Producers, actors, world travelers. Oh, how exciting. Uh, you uh, gentlemen aren't married. Oh, no, we're not. No, we thought it might be better if we each had a girl. <laughs> it uh, just seems that we've met somewhere. Oh, perhaps each other on the continent. Don't you just love your it? Personally, I like Schlitz. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's fortunate that your daughter is here at the same time as Mr. Martin and Mr. Lewis, Mrs. Van Loop. I know she's interested in the stage and movies. You see, these gentlemen are very well-known producers. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Jerry, well, yes, Jerry and I produced quite a few good pictures. Oh, yes, you must have seen Everybody Does It. Oh, yes, I have. Did you produce that? No, but we're making another picture just like Everybody Does It. It's about a bashful young man, and it's called I Didn't. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if you two really are as famous as you're making out. You doubt us? Why, I can pick up that phone right this minute and call any star in Hollywood. Go ahead. I don't believe you. I'll show you. Dean, quick. Get on the extension in the next room. Okay, Jer. Now, where's Mr. Martin going? Oh, well, you see, Dean is a singer, and every day at this time, he has his throat sprayed with DDT. <laughs> is DDT good for his voice? No, but pity the poor moth that flies in when Dean's got his mouth open. <laughs> Lewis, what about that phone call you were going to make? Sure, Mrs. Van Loop. Who do you want me to call? Just name any star. Any star. Well? Clark Abel, fine. <laughs> Hello, operator. I want to talk with Clark Abel in Hollywood. Hello, big ear. <laughs> this is J.L. A friend of mine wants to talk with you. Here's the phone, Mrs. Van Loop. Oh, oh my. Uh, hello, Mr. Gable. This certainly is a pleasure. Hello, baby. <laughs> How are things in Hollywood? Hello, baby. I enjoyed your last picture. Hello, baby. Well, that's enough, Mrs. Van Loop. Yeah, but you hardly let me talk. Clark has a beautiful voice. I know, but his vocabulary is pretty limited. <laughs> I say, uh, Mr. Lewis... You couldn't connect me with Charles Boyer, could you? Why, of course he can. If you say so. Hello, operator. Get me Charles Boyer in Hollywood. At the Beverly Wilshire. If he isn't there, try the... Beverly Cosbar. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. Jerry, I'm in Chicago. The Ambassador East. The pump room. We oui, pump room. After dinner, they pump your wallet. <laughs> Chuck, a friend of mine wants to talk with you. Okay, Mrs. Van Loop. Oh, uh, hello, Monsieur Boyer. Comment allez-vous? C'est un plaisir à parler avec vous. Depuis quand avez-vous cette cinéma? Hello, baby. <laughs> Sounds just like Claude Gable. Sure, Gable and Boyer talk the same because they both have the same English coach. Who? Sam Goldwyn. <laughs> Let's not bother Mr. Boyer anymore. So long, Chuck. I'll be seeing you. And when I do, remind us to work on some new impersonations. Well, Mrs. Van Loop, do you still want to cancel your reservation? Heaven, no, Mr. 
Mr. Schlump, I'd like very much to have my daughter Daisy Esther meet these two charming chaps. May I borrow them for a while? Of course you can borrow them. Keep them as long as you want. But you better return us after two weeks or it'll cost you two cents a day. <laughs> oh, you dear boy. Goodbye, Mr. Schlump. Come on, boys. Coming, Mrs. Van Duke. <laughs> really, I'm so thrilled, you know. It's wonderful that Daisy Esther's is going to meet you wonderful boys. You know, I left her somewhere in the lobby. And... Oh, yes, there she is. Oh, Daisy Esther. Here, dear. She's a little thin, isn't she? No, only from the front and the side. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Van Loop, aren't you afraid to let her walk out in the street? No, oh, why should I be? Somebody's liable to slap a stamp on her and mail her. <laughs> Hello, dear. Uh, Daisy Esther. Say hello to Mr. Martin and Mr. Lewis. Hello, Daisy Esther. Hello, Daisy Esther. Hello. <laughs> what takes you so long to say hello? I get pushed from over-exercising. Well, what did you do that was so strenuous? I walked across the room. Why should that tire you? The wind was against me. <laughs> Is that all you have to say to these eligible gentlemen, dear? I accept. You accept what? <laughs> Whatever you want to ask me. You see, I don't go out much. <laughs> oh, Daisy, yes, that's only joking. Why, every boy in town's trying to put a ring on her finger. So what happens? The ring keeps slipping up her arm? <laughs> I like you. Why? Because I'm handsome? No, because you're skinny like me. <laughs> skinny? That's a lie. I am not skinny. I'm big. Full-chested. And I'm... I'm... I'm a Samson. I'm so strong, many of the time I've picked up trees with my bare hands. Sometimes I even pick up the shoes. <laughs> now, Jerry, that's enough already. Me, Tarzan, you, Dean. Me, Tarzan, you, Dean. <laughs> me, Dean, me think you nuts. <laughs> And you'll be happy to learn that he and Mr. Martin are famous producers. Oh, how super. You know, I'm going to be a great actress someday. Is that right, Daisy Esther? Yes. Everybody says I have a... I have a lot of fire. <laughs> Don't look now, but I think you're out of lighter fluid. <laughs> I'd certainly be willing to spend a lot of money if Daisy Esther could get a good part in a play. How nice. <laughs> I'd spend even more for a husband I said I'd spend even more for a husband For my beautiful, talented, glamorous daughter What do you say? Are you for real? <laughs> oh, just a minute, Jerry Come on Look, Jerry Be nice to this spook here <laughs> Her old lady has a lot of money And might make us rich, you know I might invest in a new nightclub under the management of Martin and Lewis if Daisy could star in her own play. Shake hands with Eugene O. Lewis. <laughs> Mrs. Van Loop, last month I wrote a play that would be perfect for Daisy Esther, which we could put on for the guests tonight. Oh, how peachy keen <laughs> What's the name of the play? Oh, it's called, um, um, uh, it's called, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Daisy Esther, but it's not polite to talk when Dean is singing. Oh, but Mr. Martin isn't singing. Want to bet? <laughs> Sing, Dean. Joe, 
Let her go, let her go, let her go. here at Mother Hucklemeyer's Indian Retreat. Mr. Jerry Lewis and Mr. Dean Martin will present a new play. Now, here is the author, Jerome Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story of the eternal triangle of a man and his wife and another man, where the towels are marked his, hers, and he never should have rented the room. <laughs> now we present Love in Darkest Africa. Mr. Lewis, what part do I play? Oh, yes, Daisy, you play the part of a woman. Oh, I'll try to live up to it. <laughs> and, Dean, you're the other man. We're both in love with this creature. Dean, boy, here's your part. This story is all about diamond mines, and you play the part of one of the drivers. Here's your part. Love in Darkest Africa. <laughs> Africa, the dark continent. Africa, the home of the famous Kimberly Diamond Mines. Africa, with its great white princesses. I'm a great white princess. The Kimberly Diamond Mine was the richest diamond mine in the world, and the diamonds were jealously guarded. Even so, every once in a while, somebody would try to steal one, but it was no use. <laughs> The thief was always caught, and if he wasn't dead already, they would give him 30 lashes. One Z, two Z, three Z, four Z. And now our story begins. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you to Darkest Africa and the Kimberly Diamond Mines. My name is Jim Kimberly. I own diamond mines. I love old, precious diamonds. But there is something I love that's even more precious than diamonds and older, too. My wife, Nellie. I'm his wife, Nellie. He thinks I'm faithful to him, but I ain't. Yes, sir. My wife, Nellie, is my proudest possession. Bought her at a fire sale down in Cape Town. I ain't in love with Jim Kimberly. I'm in love with Rod Marvin, the foreman. I'm nuts about Rod. Rod loves me madly, violently, passionately. He is what I call a hot rod. Well, I love you, Nellie, and I have a plan. A plan to kill your husband and seize control of the diamond mine. But how will you kill my husband? He's so suspicious. If you stabbed him with a knife, he'd suspect that something was up. <laughs> no, you child, you dear precious child... I'll simply use voodoo on your husband and he'll waste away to nothing. He'll lose several pounds each day until he weighs nothing. You see if I'm right. A few months later, I came into the house and found my husband writing in his diary. Monday, December 8th. Dear diary, today I only weigh two pounds. <laughs> my doctor says it's nothing serious. He says I should have more iron. The doctor says that the only thing that will help me is more iron. Tuesday, December 9th. Ate my erector set. (laughs) 
Wednesday, December 10th. Can't seem to keep a thing on my stomach. <laughs> Thursday, December 11th. And playing with my erector set again. <laughs> Friday, December 12th, fish day. I have to be careful. Last Friday, a fish almost ate me. Hello, Jim, darling. Writing in your diary? Oh, hello, Nellie, dear. Darling, you're working so hard. You must rest. It was only last week when the cannibals captured you and tried to cook you. Yeah. Lucky for me, they were a poor tribe that didn't have a pot. (laughs) I'll get it. Unga bunga linga, mutang, rap gob, ikawak, ug, rublang, Ava Gardner. Who was that? That was Hollywood calling. <laughs> I just want another elephant. Gosh, my keychain is getting so bulky. <laughs> well, I must leave now. There's a little trouble at the mine. What kind of trouble? Some of the diamonds are coming up stamped Woolworth. <laughs> I'll be right back, dear. Oh, Rod, it's you. Yeah, darling, I've come to whisk you away. We can't wait any longer. Come on out the window. Me first. Now you. Now we're alone at last. (laughs) Who was that? It's me, Dean. I'm on the wrong page. But now that I'm here, I want to know what's going on. Rod and I are leaving. And don't try to stop us. I've got a forty-five in my hand. That doesn't scare me. I've got a water pistol. <laughs> well, I'm firing. <laughs> now, how do you expect to kill me with a water pistol? The water will take the curl out of your hair and you'll die of pericomo. <laughs> No use, Jim. Rod and I are going to be married. Married? But, Nellie, you're already married to me. I'm your two-pound husband. (laughs) We're going to take care of that, Jerome Kimberly. No, you're not. You see what I have in my hand? A poison dart gun. It's aimed right at your heart, Rod Marvin. No! Don't blow, schmo. (laughs) (laughs) You can't stop me. Here goes. The dart is in the blowgun. I raise the gun to my lips. I fill my chest with air. (laughs) Well, the poor fool, he inhaled the dart. Wait. He's trying to say something. Let's hear his last words. Jim, what are you trying to say? I made the (laughs) boo-boo. Oh, Oh, no. no. Come on, Jerry. Good night, everybody. See you next week, folks. Bye. Love and kisses. The Martin and Lewis Show, transcribed in Chicago, is produced by Robert L. Redd and is written by Charlie Isaacs, Jack Douglas, and Ben Starr. The music is arranged and conducted by Dick Stabile. Next week, our guest will be Georgie Jessel. Martin and Lewis are currently appearing in Chicago at the Chez Paris. This is Charles Martin saying good night for the Martin and Lewis Show. What's on NBC tonight? A new personality has joined the NBC Parade of Stars, none other than lovely Mindy Carson. Hear the most refreshing young singing star of the year when Mindy Carson sings tonight on NBC. Stay tuned for the Dave Garraway Show.